Hello there and welcome to Improve Your Voice. My name is Darren McStay and today I'm going to give a review on the voice of Christopher Hitchens. I, I think it's a superstition, uh, one among many. Christopher Hitchens was quite a famous author, someone who I knew of and was aware was in the world but I never really studied or looked into too much and looking uh, into him for this review I've discovered that he studied at both Oxford and Cambridge. He's clearly quite an academic and he, he, he spent most of, his, most of his life writing and so he's someone who's probably had a, an incredible amount of time alone but also he's known for his debate so he's used his voice in the past of course he's dead now he's been dead for 10 years died of cancer and I'm, I'm going to show you a little clip now and it's about him discussing his cancer so I'm sorry about the nature of the um, video but it's interesting because he's in a comfortable environment and he's talking very confidently about his situation and it's it's a nice opportunity to hear him speak very neutrally and without too much effect you know of passion or too much um, too much outside influence so let's just take a listen I, I think it's a superstition uh, one among many um, and I think I know where it comes from actually if you if you'd like me to say I mean well when I was a child, we were all very frightened still by polio. And it takes an effort to remember that now, but in many countries, people still are. Previous generations would have been smallpox, the heart that never gets the right rhythm, bronchitis, TB, all these things. But none of them have the same, I think, horror as cancers have been allowed to acquire. Clearly, he's from, he's well educated, and you can hear. Uh, that he's well spoken. So he's he's another um, person who falls into the category we class as RP, so received pronunciation. He pronounces things very uh, short and with with the least amount of accent possible. However, creating this like small amount of accent actually creates an accent of its own. And he himself is someone who has a little campness to his voice and he uses a bit of nasality too. We can hear that where he's like, yes, oh, Mm, uh, he kind of uses some of this um, nasal quality to produce sounds. And if you look at him, you can see that he's got a nose that is shaped a very specific way. And I wonder if kind of that um, nasal inflection that he uses may be because there's a kind of a natural um, kind of space in his nose almost that allows it to happen. So it's not conscious, it's just something he's developed because of the way he's shaped. And I think it's probably because of the idea of there being a live thing inside you. A live thing inside you. And you can hear he's actually got quite a resonant voice. He, um, he's not speaking very loudly, but you can tell, you know, if you're in a room with him, it'd be easy to hear. There's the, the, you know, he's, he's relaxed and that allows for this space and this resonance to occur. Now, you may find, if you watch any amount of my videos, that when I come across a voice that is resonant, generally I'll say it's because they are relaxed or they have space in their body to, in order to let the vibrations move around. And he's, he's clearly a good example of that. And it is interesting because quite often people who live a sedentary lifestyle or people that are sitting down, he's a writer, so he <laughs> spent a lot of time sitting down, um, tend to kind of affect their posture over time and so it's not really affected his voice so much but I do wonder if because he's quite he seems like a quite a big chap that if he were to be in a different uh, line of work may say for example he had been an actor or something uh, or a singer maybe he'd he had such a good instrument that was able to produce quite rich warm sounds as it was and if he'd trained it even more I wonder how big, bold, bright and you know clear he could have become. He may have been even even more gifted in that respect. So yeah, he had a good voice, I would have said. Um, but it's this nasal quality and this campness, this relaxed attitude and this falling down. And he's, because you can hear that he's relaxed because he kind of touches on the tip of his pulse register. Uh, hmm. Yes, he sounds like a sly fox. So he does use his nasal cavity there quite a lot to send air through, yet he's um, using the RP pronunciation. So, but he's not, but he's not using RP in a uh, news 
broadcaster English. He's he's really dipping down and creating that space in the back of his jaw and then allowing the sound to come out through his nose. A sort of malignant alien that can't outlive you but that does in a sense have a purpose to its life which is to kill you and then die. It's like an obscene parody of the idea of being pregnant. You notice that at the end of his words he, he kind of tends to go down and he's enjoying um, finishing off sentences by allowing it to drop. And I wonder if that's actually just a habit or maybe something that he's acquired to help tell his story um, in order to keep people listening and like everything is a question. Some people go up at the end like that to hold a question. So you might think they were going up, but he kind of does the same thing and adds a question but going down. Hmm. Yes, it's almost like at the end of every sentence he's saying, do you see what I mean? Yes, do you understand? Right, and then he continues on like that. It's quite an interesting kind of little habit he's formed. In fact, I, I always feel sorrier for women who have cancer than men. It's, for men, the idea of hosting another life of any kind is sort of hard, hard to think about. But for a woman, it, it must be a, a grotesque nasty version of the idea of being a host to another life. He's got quite a, I think in England we call it a stiff upper lip and he's a quite, quite, his top lip's quite tight, I think mine is as well, but I mean it's part of, you know, genetics and, you know, uh, just, just, just the way he's built and the way maybe I'm built. Um, but, you know, how does that affect the sound he's making, I wonder? I have a feeling this is why people propitiate it with bogus cures, terrible rumours, um, scare stories and so on. And I've set my face to try to demonstrate that it's a, it's a malady like any other and it will yield to reason and science and that's what I'm trying to spend my time vindicating. To be fair, because he's not over-articulating, he's, he's very clear and he's very precise, I wonder if, you know, just keeping his lips very small and forward is what's helping him produce those sounds because he's not overdoing it. He's just very subtle, very relaxed. I mean, I don't really know what to say about this voice. He's just, he's a man who's done a lot of speaking. He's an intellectual thinker and he's someone who articulates himself clearly. He pronounces the end of words, but being so considered and so practiced at speaking well, he doesn't necessarily have to finish the end of sentences in order for them to be completely understood. He's paced, he takes his time, and he really relishes this nasal kind of camp quality and dropping down on his lower register like that. So he sits on his low register, on his low tones, but allows the nose to carry some of the air through his speech. He was a good speaker and I don't really know what else to say because I don't know how this video is going to help too many people but if you wanted to adopt some of his sounds you could just drop down, relax, use some more of your nasal quality and just speak in the RP action but, but also making sure to open up the back of the jaw to let lots of space in the back. Alright, so that's Christopher Hitchens. I'm Darren McStay, this is Improve Your Voice and until the next time, look after your voice.